So this is a little toy known as Euler's disc. It's essentially like spinning a 10p piece, but this is quite a heavy um, disc. And this is a slight concave mirror, which just helps it to um, stabilize in the middle. And I'm just gonna um, spin it as you would a coin. These little triangles I have on top show you um, how quickly the disc itself is spinning, and that's actually pretty slowly. So the disc itself is rotating, but not very quickly. But the point of contact between the disc and the mirror is spinning uh, really quickly. And that's what you can hear. And that frequency of that point of contact moving around is getting faster and faster and faster, even though the disc itself is just spinning at a constant rate. The disc is almost horizontal. It's rattling around extremely fast, proportional to one over the square root of the sine of the angle. And of course, that will go to infinity when the angle goes to zero, when the disc is actually flat. Now you're going to hear the sound of a singularity. Wow. Spectacular. This is one of my oldest toys. It's a Tibetan singing bowl made of brass with a couple of handles like this. And as you see, what I do is I rub my hands backwards and forwards on the handles. And if I get the friction in the shape of my hands just right, quite a Zen thing to do, then I can induce vibrations in the bowl, which then transfer into vibrations on the water. And what you're seeing on the water is the vibrations of the bowl making waves go across the water, standing waves. And as the water oscillates up and down, if you do it exactly right, you can make these water waves so large that drops come off and spray into the air. And all the time you have this intriguing noise as well. Possibly not a very tuneful song, but... Tibetan singing bowl. I have a cylinder here within which I've got some glycerol, which is just sugar and water solution, and that means it's a viscous liquid. And I've also put some coloured dye in here, some blue and some green, so that when I turn this handle, you can see the mixing taking place. So you can see the blue and the green swirl all the way around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop turning and I'm going to reverse the flow. And I'll ask the question, do you think that this will mix even more? Do you think it'll stay about the same? Or do you think it'll completely unmix? So I'm going to go backwards now until I've done the same number of turns that I did forwards, but now in reverse. And to begin with, not much happens. But as I get closer to the end, you can see the colours start to come back again and eventually completely go back to the start again. This is different to what you expect because if you were to do this in a bath of water, when you swirl the water around, when you stop, the water carries on, which means that it's quite difficult to do everything in reverse. Because this is a viscous fluid, when I stop turning, the liquid stops, which means that when I go backwards, I reverse the flow completely. This has application in the manufacture of mobile phone screens because here you want to end up with a perfectly flat glass screen. And so here, if you go backwards in time, this mechanical modeling will tell you what shape you should start with in order to end up with the flat glass.